el... cuando se abrió el séptimo sello en el cielo viste que los ángeles dejaron de tocar when the seventh seal was open in heaven did you see that the angels stopped playing stopped praising they did not know what was happening on earth They found out when it was open, and they kept quiet. And since they did not know until it was open, and then they realized the work that was going to be carried out on earth. They saw the great work that he was going to carry out for those who he redeemed on the cross in his first coming. And the angels have never fallen. They never failed. They have never known what to be a forgiver is, to be a healer, because they have never been sick. They haven't fell. They do not know what sin is. And by them coming and knowing the mystery for which that seventh seal was being manifested on earth. And when it was open and they knew that work that was going to be carried out on earth for those which he redeemed, the great work that he will be carrying out with that opening is the same one that he did with Jesus when he was adopted on Mount Transfiguration. But he had to die to bear the sins, to redeem us. And now that work becomes complete, made a reality with the eternal bodies that he is going to give us. Therefore, by the angels knowing that, seeing there the children of God manifested on earth, whom he redeemed and he bought with his blood, by seeing such a great work, they knew and had the knowledge of what it is to be in a fallen condition. Because from Eden until now, the human being has fallen, but with the coming of Christ in his first coming, the human being comes to be restored to the eternal life with that sacrifice. But the very important part is how those angels realized that great work which was carried out there. And now, not in the ages, but now, he is coming to give us the eternal and glorified body. The same one he gave Jesus when he was resurrected. And there is a part where he says that the children of God are greater and have more power than the angels in heaven. Do you know what that is? That we are more, and he says that we have more authority than the angels in heaven. And that is something so great that that is why they stopped. And other than that, now it's not just going to be one person who's going to be adopted, but rather many children of God. The number is there. How many are going to be adopted and transformed while alive? And that work that he is going to carry out with that transformation of those in that group, when the angels see it, there then they see that great mystery and they learn what it is to be in a condition of sickness, of sin. See, all those attributes, they did not receive mercy from someone or they did not receive forgiveness from someone or a reciprocal action, something. They were unaware of everything. They did not know. They only knew what it was to praise and glorify. See? But that whole part when they knew what that was and why the seventh seal was going to do the work that he was going to carry out on earth with its opening. Because in the meantime, there was a great work that was done. But the reason why 
the purpose of God in order for him to have that silence in heaven that was not known. That is, the angels did not know it. The work was being carried out on earth in the spiritual realm for us to know all that was going to happen. But in heaven, they were glorifying and praising, holy, holy the Lord, and the work was being done. But once that seventh seal is open, they know what it is, and they stop playing. And the silence begins there. Then they see there on earth, they see those children of God, the work that God is doing with them, of giving them of himself. What he wanted to do from the beginning. Now is when he comes to fulfill it in the children of God in this end time by sending that mighty angel of Revelation 10 with the title deed in his hand, with the book sealed with seven seals, and bringing it to earth and giving it to a man and speaking what he has to speak for those children of God to obtain the adoption. In other words, that silence that took place there where on Mount Transfiguration when he said to them, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. They interrupted even, he interrupted, that voice interrupted even Peter's conversation. And every time we have mentioned that and every time an environment comes up again, And the topic is always focusing on that now. Peter noticed, he told me, hey, lately it is like everything is focused on adoption on Mount Transfiguration. And Brother William always, in most of the parts where the seventh seal is being shown in the writings, most of the time he puts page 42 of quotations. That is the paragraph page 42 on the left-hand side. That is the paragraph that is in the two rows. It's the one on the middle there on the right-hand side. He uses that paragraph many times. And he shows there what a child of God is being adopted, the order of the adoption. And there it is complete in that paragraph, how it is going to happen. And everything in these days is focusing on that, on what the adoption of the children of God is. And even the angels stopped doing everything just to watch that great event of the adoption, that even the power and authority of those children are greater than them. I am going to read it so it will be... But what he spoke and wrote is already coming out of what the power and authority of a child of God adopted is in the presence of God. He has more authority than an angel. Do you know what that is? That is why they can have control over nature. They can have control over everything by divine direction, of course. An angel cannot do that. So it is the full power of God in us. Notice, if we were to understand a little bit more regarding the work that God is carrying out in this time, it might even be that we find ourselves not doing the things we should do to try to haste and to absorb as much as possible of this that is being given. And God has allowed us to go little by little so that we do not All of the sudden, we do not incline to fanatism, which is not good. But, but at the end, if I would have known how great this that is happening is, oh boy, it doesn't even make you want to, because it is something great, so and so great. In other words, so much to stop the worship to came to a complete stop, and the earth to stop it. That is because something big was happening on earth, and it is not for a second, it is for the space of half an hour. So it is a span that is taking place on earth in the midst of the human race. Like in the midst of the human race, there was on the side of the mountain a lot of things happening, and up there a son was being adopted. 
something like that. We are on Mount Zion in the age of the cornerstone. In this mankind, God adopting his children and the world goes on as normal, as if nothing is happening. And God is preparing in the house of Pharaoh itself as he prepared Moses for the deliverance of the Hebrew people. He raised him up right there, fed him right there, everything right there. In the same house of the devil, God is preparing his children because this kingdom is the kingdom of the devil which will be taken away. And right under his nose, God is preparing some children for adoption to remove his own kingdom. That is, the kingdom that he has now, because it is not his, but let's say, speaking in terms that he is the one who has it, in other words, God is preparing his children with the fullness of God in them. He is preparing them right under the devil's nose in his own house. The same thing that the devil will try to do in the millennium. Do you see that the devil is an impersonator? That is what God is going to do now. Take away the kingdom. God is adopting his children, feeding them with manna, with that hidden manna, giving them the thunders, giving them the wrapping faith, in the house of the devil himself, in this same earth, in this same kingdom, there God is preparing his children to adopt them. That is something tremendous what God is giving us at this time, where the angels looked and saw that work, and they had to keep quiet and leave everything in silence because of that work he was going to do with his children. Notice how great is the work he's doing with each one of you. It is something great that they kept quiet in heaven. Everyone kept their mouth shut because of you. Do you know what that means? That is, you are more important than the angels in heaven. In other words, look at the reverence that the angels had there with the opening of the seventh seal for the work that God was carrying out in you, that he was going to carry it out at this time. Look at the reverence he had with you. In other words, it is something. You're not just anything. Even the angels stop doing everything for you. Oh boy, that is a great thing. It is none other than the kings and priests that he is preparing for their adoption. It is the greatest and highest creation of all creation in the universe, even of the angels. They are God's chosen ones, greater than the angels in heaven, he says there. A child has more authority, more power than the angels. And those are heavy words for the one who to have more authority than an angel in heaven, in the presence of God. That is something very, but very great. So we have been given a very great blessing that day by day in our daily life to meditate from time to time and refresh our memory of who we are. That is good. Because in this way, we respect one another more. And we know that we are not talking to any John of the people. But as we say here, John of the people. No, here is not a child of a neighbor. He is a child of the creator of the heavens and the earth. In other words, everywhere where they are receiving the teaching of the rapturing faith, everywhere they are receiving that, and the elect of God is receiving it, each and every one must have a good behavior with each other, because the silence in heaven was because of those firstborns that he is preparing for the adoption. They're not just anything. So you must have respect for one another, honor one another because we are not just anything here on earth. We are the creation of God that goes more and more to perfection every day with the eternal body that he will give us. So I think that is a good summary for tomorrow, for tomorrow's topic, which is the mystery of the harvesting angels. I think it is, although we had already talked about that topic, but it is again repeated. Miguel played it several times on the tour. But tomorrow we can talk about it some more. But it is something great that God has given us, which we must always thank Him for. Because among millions of people who have gone through this planet Earth, 
that he has been pleased to think of you and me, that he has placed this group with this messenger until the end, in the end, and that that has caused silence in heaven. Because the silence did not happen before. The silence occurred when that angel presented himself there. That is why he says, and there he was, page 96 to 97 of the seals. And once he was there, he opens the seventh seal. The seventh seal is open. He takes the title deed from the hand of the one sitting on the throne, brings it to earth open, and gives it to him. But already in heaven there is silence. And that work, from the time he takes the title until now, then everything is silent. We do not know since when it could have been that of taking the book there, that there is a date. From then on, that half hour of silence begins. He spoke openly about it in 2009 and said, the half hour of silence has not started yet, but it's going to start. In other words, that, see, it has a beginning. And for sure, it must have been in the interlace of the dispensation of grace with that of the kingdom. And if that of the grace was still open in 2018, but already in 2019, around January, he says that it was already closed. In other words, we are already seeing a time where it all this began to be fulfilled. And fully in the fulfillment of the tenth vision with the miracles and wonders that we are going to have. Then there, the half hour is in full fulfillment. But it's already letting you see that if it is in full fulfillment, it is in the part of, of the middle or at the end of the half hour. And I said something there, because after that, the resurrection takes place. The transformation, 30 to 40 days, the rapture, and the three and a half years of tribulation. Now, what things happen within the half hour? What does that half hour cover? Because if it covers up to the introduction of the millennium, with the Lord returning with the elect to earth to establish the millennial kingdom, then we see that we are very but very close because all that can be within the half hour of silence. And when you begin subtracting and adding, and it is almost half an hour, as we were saying almost from here to Montellermo, we say that is almost half an hour, that is almost between 20 to 25 minutes, but almost half an hour, round it up. You see, we always throw a little bit more just in case there is some traffic. See, but we talked about that a little while ago. There you see, it's about half an hour. So we are very close to that which we are going to receive. And for you to be part of that attribute, of that thought that he thought of, to place you within that time on this planet Earth. And that we had that part of the end of the dispensation of the grace and the beginning of the dispensation of the kingdom, and that we have had part in both reign, and that we have had part in the new birth, and that we have part now in the adoption, part in the eternal and glorified body, part in the 30 to 40 days, part in the rapture, part in the supper, you begin to add, not to subtract, always add, because the saying is add and subtract, nah, to add, you begin to add and add, and that launches us into eternity. All the promises we are receiving, they are all going to launch us to eternity. And the only thing that produces that is the message, because he says, if someone were to enter fully into the message, it will launch him in the rapture to eternity without even knowing it, without knowing it. That is why Abraham and Sarah were rejuvenated around the world without realizing it. They look at each other, wait a minute, but you are beautiful, Sarah, girl. See, she was beautiful, she was young. They had not realized the work that God had done through the word that contained the promise he spoke to him about. See, they believed that promise and it came through. And around that word, to be able to have that promise done, they had to be rejuvenated. And so we are being rejuvenated with this word, with the message, the teaching, the rapturing faith, which is what God has given us, with which we are going to reach the perfection of the new eternal and glorified body. It is something that has never happened in the human race. And God alone left some samples, as it was with Enoch, and as it was with Elijah, and as it was with Jesus.
In other words, there were three examples in different angles that God left in the history of the Bible of his program so that we know that that indeed is going to happen. Enoch walked with God, obtained the rapture in faith, and left. We are walking with him. We are hand on hand with him. And the thing is that there, he was not seen walking with God. He was walking with God, and he doesn't say, he doesn't show that later on we will know the meaning of what walking with God is. Now we are seeing, as far as God is allowing us to see, the meaning of walking with God. If he's not there, and he says that that mighty angel came down and gave him that title deed, now all the authority of heaven, where is it? On earth. And that is to walk with God. In other words, we are walking with none other than the creator of heavens and earth in the form of a message, in a man. That is simple. But because it is so simple, it is impossible for the human mind to think that such a glorious and great thing could be manifested in the way God is doing it. But so it pleased God. And he blended in the midst of the people to show his glory. Isn't he going to show it there when the pillar of fire was descending, coming down, and was seen in the little wooden room? That, when Brother Branham explains it in that way, that the pillar of fire rested there was so that we understand a little bit of the divinity which will be operating in that place. But it is not that the people will be seeing the pillar of fire coming down there. The pillar of fire has been with us for a long time. And we don't have to wait for that moment until we see the person coming out there being healed to say what Brother Branham said is true. The pillar of fire had gone in there. No, we have already believed that beforehand that he is with us and that when that time comes, it is a vindication of what he said, that he was with his people and he would not leave us by ourselves. That will be the final vindication that he has been and will always be with us, and he is with us. So the inheritance that has been given to us is beautiful. The great blessings that has been given to us, the blessing among so many millions of people, and that we have been given the privilege of being part of that light, of that pillar of fire which will rapture us. When that persecution comes, don't get scared. There is a light, said he would catch his people away. She'll not go through the tribulation, said Brother Brandon. So that is the greatest and most glorious thing that we will be receiving at the end of our journey, being here on this planet Earth, in these earthly bodies. Well, these short words have been a blessing. And right now, the sign, I think, that I was missing for the pool here was Tunis' sign when he raised his hand because I was going to leave, I was meditating. And when I looked there, Tuni was with his hands raised. What's up? Where are you going? All those little things. There is always something that touches the inner beings of the chosen ones in some way. And it moves the scene to talk about things at the moment they have to be talked about. But I felt right now to talk about these little things, which are of a blessing and reconfirmation. And it makes us to meditate more on the greatness that God is carrying out with each one of us. And there when we look at the little problems and the things, one already says, my God, but what you are doing with me is so great that then, oh, this is a piece of cake. So anything is going to be resolved. And if it is not solved at the moment, it will be solved later on. One looks at the things with a different way of looking at them, because what one is looking at is the goal, which is what he desires with us, and that is the adoption. And when one looks at that, all the problems become, as our brother William says, on many occasions. 
a grain of sand placed in the furthest star, in the furthest galaxy. That is to say, they are insignificant. May God bless you. God keep you. Today, Thursday, March 9th of this year, 2023. And also to the brothers and sisters who are, I believe, gathered in some places, as always, everywhere they meet, may these words also be a blessing for you. And to all who will be listening to these words, may you know and always be aware of who you are in the divine program. Never forget that silence was made in heaven for you. In other words, that is something very big. Therefore, value your life. Those who do not value their life because they say, I don't have, I am not good for anything, or I am not. No, you are a child of God, firstborn of God, greater and with more authority than the angels in heaven. So we can keep talking about all that whole line during these days. What is the authority of an adopted child of God? The authority of a child of God. Let's use that title. Well, may God bless you. Bon appetit. God bless you. That's it. What he has longed for to do from the beginning. To have children of God. To his image and his likeness. And that now at the end of that whole program. He has reached that stage. Of crowning his great masterpiece which reaches its peak part by adopting his children as he did there on Mount Transfiguration with Jesus to reach that peak part of his great program and to have that end a happy fulfillment and so much so that he commanded all heaven to be silent for his children's sake. It is at the only stage that he commands all heaven to silence. Just as the adoption stage was with Jesus, which represented what was going to happen at this time. Because there was a voice that said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. In other words, he also commanded his disciples to be silent there. It is the masterpiece of God being perfected in this end time. And he likes to talk with his children. Because notice, he talked back then with Adam and Eve. Later, he talked with Abraham and Sarah. And in different moments also before that. But let us say thus the most marked talks. Because we can say that in every manifestation of God through his messenger, there was a talk with the people to whom he was sent to. But speaking more privately, let us say, with his people, For we see there that talk of Elohim with Abraham and Sarah. We also see him talking with Manoah and his wife, Mrs. Manoah. And we also see him talking with Moses on the burning bush and in different occasions. We also saw him speaking with Joshua, with that great prince that appeared to him. We also see him talking with the moment 
when that great vision was open to Isaiah, there was a conversation there, a heavenly conversation, which we also saw more marked with Gabriel and Mary. In other words, that which was shown there to Isaiah in different chapters of Isaiah, in some of them, it was also reflecting what was happening when Gabriel spoke to Mary, another talk, you see? Then Jesus, talking to his disciples, besides the preachings that he had, he also had private chats with his disciples. Because notice when he says, the people were dismissed, and he speaks certain things. Another one, when the people were dismissed, his disciples came to him and said to him, explain to us that parable of the tares and of the wheat and all of that, see? Something more privately with them. And so in different times, God has been talking with his children from age to age in each messenger. With Brother Branham, how many times did he have those talks like that with ministers and brethren also? And we also saw it in our brother William, also talking on certain occasions, besides the preaching, of course. And I reiterate on that part where the Lord talked with his children in every manifestation in each time. But notice how he also allow us at this time after the seven angel messenger left and the mighty archangel has also left because he had to leave just as he also had to leave back then in the time of Jacob and he also had to leave back then in the time of Mary Notice, these are different moments where they represent, typify certain times in this end time, which were going to be fulfilled, because the scriptures have multiple fulfillments. Now notice, God also at this time has allowed us to have these talks with the people something more informal, which is also such a beautiful way for God to express His love toward His people, and where He speaks directly to our souls also and explains to us certain things that later in preachings and in teachings are made known in a broader way and with scriptures and different excerpts of messages. But these conversations are not new and they are nothing new. But God is also pleased at this time with the same thing that happened in past times, to speak with his people, to talk with his children. In other words, he is a God of fellowship. He likes fellowship. Well, that can be, this can be a little part to add it to what was spoken just now of what the authority of an adopted child of God is. Because in that authority and to receive that authority, a child of God has to have someone to give him that adoption and someone to give him that knowledge, the teaching for that adoption. Therefore, someone has to be talking to that child of God who is going to be adopted. Someone has to be talking to him as Moses and Elijah were talking with Jesus. 
the one they were going to adopt. In other words, the ministries for the adoption of those children of God whom will obtain the authority, the power of God in them, will be in the midst of the people of God in this end time, in the age of the cornerstone. Page 301 of the Book of the Seals. There we see that authority of an adopted son of God, the one who has the ministries of Moses and Elijah, and then also that power will be given to the people of God. The authority of an adopted child of God. This we could say that it is the second part. We can place that there also in this talk today, which that environment is roaming around. And we hope that God continues to give us everything we need to adopt us.